Hello. So, um, these small little flies keep flying on my face and flying on me and stuff. Um, y'all saw at the, at the very first second or two at the video, I just wiped it off my face. So, here's the update. Um, so I was able to get the phone appointment for the housing. Uh, wow, she asked me, like, so many questions. Um, seems like, I don't know why this system feels like, excuse me, your mental health status has to um revolve around your need for housing you know like why the hell should your mental status dictate or determine or qualify your need for housing you know um so the, i mean she was just an intake lady but attitude wise she was nice on the phone you know, but it was a long process that took over 30 minutes. And um, so she told me that it's a slow and long process and that the housing is not guaranteed. Um, she told me I have another worker that's supposed to call me in 48 hours. Well, since today is Friday, I guess it's going to be Tuesday that I finally, um, you know, get that call from the other lady. And, um, so yeah, I don't know how long, but this is that I'm on a waiting list and it's a slow process and that's not guaranteed. But hey, I did my part, you know. Um, so somebody gave me $65 today and I spent my last $7 in paper money and plus a little change coins from on my lunch today and it's like I'm just you know feeling bad that, I mean I'm getting a little bit of assistant little help here and there you know so I think the few people who do have a heart and care, but, you know, it's like, I'm feeling really bad that I have to, you know, I mean, that I can't get a job anywhere blacklisted, blackball, blacklisted, ever since my senior year in high school, probably would have been before that. And I was facing discrimination and nobody wanted to hire me before I even got my first job. Thanks, foster mom, and You know. So, um. Even online jobs like Cambly, C-A-M-B-L-Y. I, yeah, I mentioned that in another video about how they don't even want to hire me, you know. <clears throat> so... With a job like housekeeping at hotels, they tell me I work too slow with the with housekeeping or dishwashing, and and my, you know I had two strokes when I was five, and they fired me like as if I did something criminally wrong, you know the fact, and then I have to deal with workplace mobbing, bossy coworkers who are seventeen year old teenagers, you know. And then everybody said I have to do what they tell me to do. I'm 36. Why do I need to do what a 17-year-old child tells me to do? And they're not my fucking boss. But perps that try to trigger me act like as if they're not trying to listen to me. And they play sight games by trying to say, well, if they're your boss, then you should do what they tell you to do. You know, it's triggering because I've told you over 800 times that they are not my supervisor. <clears throat> and then, you know... I mean, I'm still on the waiting list for housing in Pensacola also. It's been over a year, and those ladies over there have the worst attitude at area housing in Pensacola. 
And last I checked, they tried to um, call me back in April and ask me if I was still interested in the house. And I'm like, why the hell, why the hell would I not be, you know? So they made it like as if I asked me if I'm still interested, like as if it's a free will choice, you know? So, I mean, this evaluation here, Seeing more like a psyche valuation. I, I mean, I don't even know if that's used to set me up, but the, um, it was more seeing more like a psyche valuation or more like a psychosocial than just a question on, you know, I mean, just information on just getting you housing. And they're probably going to get me so so called mental health housing, and and then they will trap you by trying to say that, you know, you have to tell the truth under pen, penalty of perjury. So even if you have a past history of being depressed, they will use that against you too, you know. So, I mean, it seems like all housing or homelessness or whatever is set up because of this Masonic satanic system, you know. It's like, why why can't I be free? And it makes me angry every fucking day that gang stalking perps get to have a car and drive. They can work full time if they want to. They can have a house and live at peace if they want to. I'm mean, I'm pre- prevented from having my own vehicle, so that more people can have control over me. You know, damn! I wish somebody had a heart to bless me with a vehicle. You know, um, and then it's seeing like how the hell teenagers like. 15 year old kids get more financial fortune than me that you know their own parents love them enough to buy them a red corvette and you're 17 years old and your parents love you enough to buy you a red corvette for christmas and it's smack brand new you know but i'm not expecting something like that but i just you know need a something like a dependent i mean you know a, a dependable decent vehicle you know, um, if, and also I need for my sleep to be straightened out. Some people say that if you um, detox, um, whatever they're remotely putting in your body or whatever they're poisoning you with, if you detox and eat healthy, that helps me sleep better. But damn, um, you go to a restaurant nowadays. And if you want a healthy salad, that costs like fifteen ninety five plus tax. And then, and that's for the vegetables and all that alone. But if you want some meat to go with it, you'll have to pay like three dollars for for some chicken on the side. And it'll be like, you know, five. Like for three dollars, it'll be like five quarter size pieces of chicken or something like that. You know. And what I mean by quarter, like the size of of a coin quarter, you know, five little small pieces like that in your little salad. That that's like fifteen ninety five. And I'd be like, well, damn, this is only for the rich. And the poor people. I can't even afford McDonald's no more, and I don't want to eat it anymore because I heard about the um, human meat and fast food. You know, so that's why I don't go to McDonald's. If I mean, I try to not eat at Hardee's and stuff like that anymore. Um, Hardee's, McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, um, Popeye's, churches. And plus, you know, when I eat that kind of stuff, that will make my sleep, dep- sleep deprivation worse, too. You know, so... I wish I was functional and normal, had my own vehicle, my own place. Now I feel like I, I don't. I'm not even worried anymore about trying to get a husband, boyfriend, kids, or anything like that. I feel sitting here feeling like time is running out. I'm not even trying to chase a career anymore because I don't know how soon it'll be for World War Three. It seems like we got to prepare spiritually for heaven and stuff. But wow, this is just a battle, a big battle to fight for basic survival. And 
as I said, that interview, phone interview seemed more like a psychosocial mental health assessment than, um, it's probably a freaking trick too. Um, it seemed like as if they expect every homeless person, like people act like as if they're surprised when you homeless on the streets or they think you're lying when you tell them you don't do drugs or alcohol or, or you don't do substance abuse, you're not prostituting. If, if you're just a decent person and you're homeless on the streets, they make it like, people in society make it like as if you got some explaining to do. Or like, or they automatically just act like a know-it-all narcissist and act like they think they just know what your situation is before you can even open your mouth and explain them. And random other homeless people act like they de aggressively demand an answer for my personal business and they project their crimes onto me. If they're a drug addict, they'll falsely accuse me of being a drug addict. I never do drugs, ever, a day in my life. So most drugs, I don't even know what they look like. I don't know what um, crystal meth looks like. I don't know what dope looks like. I know a little bit. I know about what marijuana looks like, but I don't have access to it, and I hate it. I don't like cigarettes. I don't like none of that, you know? So, I... Let's see. I don't have... I mean, I don't do drugs. I don't do alcohol. I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't prostitute. No, I mean... Well, it's like, you know, nobody's sexually pimping me. You know, um, I stay to myself. I'm quiet. Um, I don't know. Um, I mean, in my situation, I mean, if I try to, you know, I can't get move forward with getting my, my license changed or get a job. I have to get my um but I don't know how long this the everything will be to to you know to get my information switched over. I need money for getting um I have to try to find an address first or like a mailing address first. I have to find a mailing address first and then get a driver's license. Um I get my license switched over but first I would have to go back to Pensacola and go to my storage unit to get my find my birth certificate and hope that Alex wouldn't mess with me but I can't ride the bus I have to pay for a cab you know and I have to pay for a taxi <clears throat> um and then I you, you know I, I I don't know I have to pay for a cab t to go find my, I mean, because I, I left on an emergency, you know, that time, um, yeah, it's just, it's just running through my head about how Alex tried to freaking handle me by trying to tell me on YouTube, talking about get out of my town and you better get out of my town and go back to Florida. Before you get locked up, and the police got you under surveillance. Like, why do you want me to go to, back to Florida when you ran me out of Florida? And then you want me to ban from riding the buses? As I said, and, and he wants to go to my hometown, New Orleans, to mock me, but telling me, get out your town. That's so freaking childish. Your ass is almost, eight. I don't know how old you are. But I bet you if I would have gone to Tampa, Florida, he would have done the same thing. You know, if I would have gone to Chicago, he would have done the same thing. Gone to ride my bus. You know, I heard about gang stalkers following, you know, the victims. Like, how the hell would they follow you from Florida all the way to Seattle, from um, Miami all the way to Seattle when you driving on a road trip, really? And they just, you know... As I said, more people are following, and, and you can't really, I mean, it seems like when it's one lone stalker, people think you're okay with, I mean, they're, they're okay with that. 
But if it's more than one person stalking and following you, then it's obviously you're the problem. You're the crazy one. Something's wrong with you. You're paranoid. You know? So, <clears throat> I mean, that lady <coughs> did an assessment questioning me about, um, you know, if anybody is, um, you know, taking advantage of me or if I owe anybody money, if I'm on drugs. Oh, I know. I'm none of that. I'm not your typical homeless or whatever the stereotype is. I mean, I was forced into homelessness because of the targeting and gang stalking, you know? So, um, yeah, I just, every day is just a, a day where I don't know what to do next. I mean, I'm not even sure if I want to stay here, but, and it's unclear on, on whether or not I'm banned from riding the buses in Pensacola. I don't know. But at least half of those bus drivers are associated with, um, you know, I'll say that like at least 75% of the bus drivers are gang stalking perps. There are about a few of them that's not many, that's really nice, you know, for the ECAT Pensacola. But um, here, I get like a whole bunch of black people being mean to me, you know, and so now <clears throat> with the money that I had that somebody gave me earlier, if I, I can't spend enough, I mean, if I can't spend it on, if I can't have extra to spend on another hotel or motel room tonight, and I have to be on the streets and the most I can spend it on is eating meals, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner or something. You know, because you go to, I go to the, um, get bullied and mobbed out of and banned from homeless shelter soup kitchens because of my OCD and not wanting people to touch me and the homeless men invade my space and social distancing or not, you know, because of my experiences and the rape and my OCD, I don't want too close to me anyway, but it's like they act like they have a right or entitled to walk close in my space and make me feel uncomfortable and trigger my PTSD, you know. So I'm the troublemaker when I say, please don't smoke around me. And this is supposed to be a Christian church right here that's a shelter that's or, or a Christian church that's a soup kitchen and y'all allow cigarette smoking. But um, that's because they're cults, Masonic cults. And church, these Masonic sellout churches don't help people. They even try to block me or try to stop me from asking other people for help. Thank you, Isle of Baptist Church in Pensacola, trying to block me from asking people for money just for, um, you know, a little lunch to eat, you know. So I'm going to have to go before my storage space runs out. It's probably already partially running out. So I'll see y'all in a while. Bye.